Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman. This, in fact, is the third novel by Christopher Buhlman I have read. The other two were all right. I had some issues, but there were also some great stuff there. Will this one be a charm or a final strike? Let us find out. So what is the hook? What is Between Two Fires about? We have Thomas, a knight turned brigand who is wandering through the plague-riddled lands of medieval France. He comes upon a homestead where there is a girl there who he decides to help. She is a very strange girl and decides to accompany him on his quest of revenge, perhaps. And along the way, they run into another man, a priest named Mathieu. And together they journey through strange lands full of creatures and dreamlike landscapes, all of which culminates into a climax of, let's say, biblical proportions. So what did I think? Well, let us begin with character. And let's start with Thomas, the knight turned brigand. He's an absolute asshole. And understandably so. He's lost everything in a particularly devastating manner. I'm not going to spoil it for you for if you have not read this novel. But we don't find out that history until about a third of the book. And there is definitely the glimmers of a man trying to break through this ravaged shell to do the right thing. But unfortunately, it never quite connected with me. There's a lot I did like about Thomas, but there are some missed opportunities, particularly in a conversation that um, all three of these characters are have, Delphine, Mathieu, and Thomas. One of them is reiterating a story, and it does not end the way Thomas would have liked. And rather than storming out or wallowing in silence, he, he forces them to continue the tale until it more or less reaches his desired outcome. I felt that scene could have gone one of two ways, and it went a completely different way, in, in a way that I didn't find as satisfying knowing Thomas and, and, and where he came from. Now let's talk about Delphine, the young girl from the farmstead who uh, Thomas saves. She's a beacon of light in this very, very bleak world of France where the Black Plague is destroying everything. She does feel kind of like an avatar rather than a real person though. There's not much depth there. However, it seems purposeful. And again, I don't want to spoil it for you because all of that stuff is revealed at the end. But she was a nice contrast to the gloom. I think anytime you have these depraved characters, right, who are miserable, tragic, you need to have that little bit of light, and she does provide that. Finally, let's talk about Mathieu. I would say I love his story the most. I love this character the most because he's been through a lot, as of many people uh, during this time period, but he remains hopeful. He remains helpful, and he puts all of these deep, dark things to the side to make sure others are thought of first, and of course, this is definitely a product of his religious beliefs. There are other characters, however, even POV characters. This, this novel's told in the omniscient POV, so I shouldn't say POV characters, but we do get into the heads of a few other characters. These are the top three, definitely the most compelling. This is probably Christopher Buhlman's best character work that I've read. It works for the most part. There are some missed opportunities, uh, particularly toward the end of the novel that weren't as cathartic, I guess, as I would have liked, but overall pretty strong work. Let us talk about the plot next. Well, it reminded me a lot of The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. If you'd like to see my review on that, check the card up in the corner here. But what I mean by that is it's kind of meandering. We have this group of characters kind of wandering around the countryside somewhat aimlessly, right? We, we don't feel like there's really a drive for them whatsoever. And I, I mean, I guess the, the land is ravaged by the plague. There's not really much to do. It seems as if Thomas is trying to exact revenge upon a certain individual, which I am not going to spoil for you. But we are treated to many interesting images, right? We have these, 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 crazy creatures, encounters, even dreamlike sequences that all make it very compelling and do break up the more tedious chapters to a satisfying degree. Those scenes are both beautiful and haunting and there's some really great stuff in here that I am sure you will like if you like something more in the vein of darkness or bleakness. The end of the book, that is where my problems lie because it felt like this book was trying to do a couple of things and it didn't quite succeed in either. It felt like it was trying to be a very character-driven story with a small cast of characters, sort of exploring larger ideas through individuals. And I absolutely love that in writing. That's probably my favorite kind of stuff. It's less plot-driven, it's more character-driven, and then the plot emerges from character. But once we get toward the end, and I'll be honest with you, I was kind of confused a little bit about the bigger things that were going on because... Between the parts of this book, and I believe there's three or four parts in this book, we have these biblical passages, right? It's it's talking about gods and devils and angels and so on and so forth. And but I wasn't quite putting two and two together, I guess, until the very end. So I'm sure my opinion is is biased on the way that I comprehended this novel. But the short version is the end is very rushed. It feels like what began, like I said, as a very small character study of, of three people wandering around France amid the Black Plague turns into a very epic fast-paced story toward the end that I don't feel 
really uh, connected the characters to the plot, unfortunately. And that's really what I look for is that we want to understand the characters, right? We want to see beneath the skin uh, what they're truly made of. And that's usually what the plot does, right? It's, it's the decisions they make, decisions are what make characters. But the end turned out to be this just, it's hard to explain. It's this large, chaotic, uh, multiple encounter climax. And then it just kind of fizzles out at the end, right? Um, there's a bit of an epilogue where we learn about what happens to these characters. But much like I read in Those Across the River, it was this interesting buildup, right? The first three quarters of the novel and the final quarter just fell apart for me, honestly. I, I didn't feel how all of the characters we've, we've come to uh, love or hate or at least understand tied into the plot in such a, a way that revealed character, right? It, it, it completed their arcs. Now, of course, with a novel structure, typically things speed up toward the end, right? Uh, the first half of the novel or so are usually people thinking they know what to do, right? They have the plan, they have the tools, and then the, the final half is normally them stumbling through the climax to discover something interesting or new about themselves that's going to help them overcome the darkness. We kind of have that here. I just didn't feel like the two things connected. The first half and the second half of the novel feel like they came from two different books, honestly. And I hate to say this because I do love shorter books, but I feel like this uh, book really needed, or the story needed more time to breathe. It needed more pages to breathe to really deliver, I think, what the intention was, was of the story. Not that I understand what the, the writer's intention was, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's like when you watch a film or you read a book and you say, okay, I see what they were going for, but it just didn't quite land for me. That's that's more or less how I ended up at the very end of this novel. All right, let's move on to the writing itself, or as I like to call it, the cinematography of the novel. Buhlman is a great writer. I've said it once. I will say it again. I will continue to say it. He's a great line-by-line -line writer. He knows when to speed things up. He knows when to slow things down. It's more or less a, a reading experience that just doesn't get in the way of things. The images are unfolding before your eyes. You never feel like you're uh, wading through inefficient prose, unless that is the intention. The one thing I noticed about his writing here that is different from the uh, the other novels I've read of his is there's a lot of exposition. There's a lot of expository stuff that's happening here. Whereas I think it would have been a better idea, or at least it would contribute to my enjoyment more if it was been, if it had been direct action, right? Like like a film, we're seeing these actions unfold before our eyes, but. There was so many situations that felt like they were being glossed over because they were being explained in such a way that was just to deliver information and not visual excitement. And another thing I'd like to mention is, I wasn't a big fan of this either, but the way we learn of Thomas's story and Matthew's story. So it's it's told in a flashback. Uh, they, they exist in chapters all by themselves. But what I didn't find interesting about that is it was kind of like, even though it was immediate action, right? It was like us watching the scene unfold before our eyes. It was delivered in one big chunk. Right. Rather than sort of teasing out the characters throughout the entire novel, we were given their entire backstory, their traumas, everything they went through in one single chapter. And while Matthews particularly was was interesting to read, it seems like the power of character and, and storytelling in general is when you don't give us everything at once, right? You slowly bleed it out because all of the actions and all the decisions that these characters make are going to make sense once we put all the pieces together. Don't give us a, an entire puzzle completed. I wanna see these distributed piece by piece. At least that's how I appreciate reading a novel. And that's how I get the most out of it. Because really it just emphasizes, again, character interwoven with plot because those two things are crucial that they work together, right? Because character is plot, plot is character. I don't think anyone should ever think of those things in isolation. And unfortunately that happens quite often. And I feel like to a degree anyway, and it could be my misunderstanding of, of, of the text, but it seemed like we had these interesting characters, but Buhlman was trying to inject this, uh, this plot he already had devised into those moments. And so it felt a little bit disjointed at times, which is why I'm going to give Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman a 7.5 out of 10. Some of the best character work I've seen him create, but it's kind of jammed between two novels, right? We have a very character-driven story, and then we have a very plot-driven story, and they're kind of mashed together, particularly rushed at the very end, and they don't quite seem to add up to what I would have found a compelling read from a character standpoint, from a plot standpoint, from everything else in between, from a thematic standpoint. And also structurally, uh, there were some odd choices with chapters, right? Uh, some chapters felt like filler. Sometimes they didn't feel like they really went anywhere, but then we had some other great ones as well. But overall, uh, you know, an enjoyable reading experience, uh, although somewhat disjointed and what I felt like just needed a little bit more time to breathe. So is this a charm or a strike? Well, I gave it 0.5 points above the other two novels that I've reviewed of Christopher Buhlman. I think it's 
Definitely his best work. Do I think it's an amazing novel? No. Do I think it's worth your time? Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of good stuff to be had with reading this novel. And perhaps I overhyped it because I've heard so many, so many great things. And in fact, some people saying it was their favorite novel of the year that they read it. So while I did try to read this with a with a, with a clear head, right, I'm sure some of those comments did poison the well a little bit. But let me know, did you read Between Two Fires? Was it as good as you heard it was? Or were you somewhat disappointed like me? And if you'd like to check out my own work and, and heckle it yourself, you can check out my books in the description below. But thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.